Hi, Hinsters, and welcome back to the channel. And if you're new, welcome to. I am Hini, an astrologer. You can check out my details below in the description box if you'd like a reading with me. And if you are a Scorpio Sun or Scorpio Rising, you can get a 50% discount currently if you book during Scorpio season. That's off birth chart readings, transit readings, tower readings, whatever the reading you would like. So here we are in Scorpio season, the first shadow season of the shadow half of the year. And it's the prime time to get or feel witchy, spooky, and weird. <laughs> Things can get trashy here, watery, messy. Scorpio is the ice sign, the secret fire sign, the fixed water sign. And we are now in a malefic season as well. Scorpio being the temple of Mars, although this is a feminine expression of Mars. I wanted to also show a few tarot cards for this particular Scorpio season where we have the Sun and Venus entering Scorpio at the same time. And just yesterday, October 25th, we officially had the new moon in Scorpio, which was a South Node eclipse as well. So yes, a lot of room for loss, breakups, letting go, exploding in some sense. Yet this is new moon stuff. So new beginnings or excitement about something new after a difficult ending or separation. Mars really speaks loudly here. And this new moon is in a Mars ruled sign and it follows the full moon in Aries, which is also a Mars ruled sign. And in just a few days, we have Mars officially retrograding in Gemini, which I'll be making a video on separately, but that retrograde is going to last a long time. But back anyway to the tarot, we can think about the justice card. Let me just check that you can see this. Yes, the justice card here. And the beginning then of this Black Fairy season, when the sun gains more dignity and Venus enters its detriment at the same time this year, it's uh, just desserts time. And yes, Scorpio season can be and feel harsh. And yes, things can feel unforgiving or brutal. Yet <laughs> there is this thick dose of that's what you get. And there's like a shrug, there's a fair dues type of feeling. And also I wanted to show the Ace of Wands. This is Mars. And the anxiety and excitement for what's to come, what is coming up, perhaps unknown or not set in stone, but wild and free feeling exciting and the king of cups let's look at the king of cups briefly there we go always a scorpio season card i feel and a reminder to keep our waters as calm as possible to be sensible about these passions and how and where we direct them these outbursts and and to kind of just have a little quiet little dance as well about it, <laughs> you know, to yourself in your chair, a chair dance. Scorpio can very much be like a chair dance kind of season, like Taurus season. You know, temperance as well, I wanted to show, which follows on nicely, I think, from the other cards, but temperance as well, just because a new moon in Scorpio in particular can give us some very bizarre idea or fantasy or the beginning of an obsessive pattern 
an addiction can be found or met again here. So it's okay to dabble, but it's easy to get carried away and to later feel like a fool <laughs> in Sagittarius season. This is actually my card, the temperance card. Um, the emperor as well, I wanted to show you. Let me just see that you can see. Yeah, okay. The emperor, because there's just so much Mars in all of this at this time. And because we need to keep our focus square and strategic. And then the eight of pentacles. There we are, the eight of pentacles, lovely. And for me, this is typical in Scorpio season, typical Scorpio card, a sign to approach these goals that we may have in a spider-like way, in a way that sits and waits a bit more, and also in a way that senses the vibrations and sets the web or lets out the line or the line and sinker appropriately. It's a bit like fishing, actually, Scorpio season as well. And what else? The Five of Swords, this one. Because with this approaching Mars in Gemini, retrograde energy. And by the way, Mars rules going backwards. And this term, walking backwards, actually, in ancient Greek, was the same term that the ancient astrologers used for the word for retrograde. But yes, to really realize the futility of bickering and to learn, if we haven't already, that there's no point really in gossiping or slandering or stirring and I know it's harder said than done for a lot of us but it is a good time to actually not simply be the shit right but to want others to feel that way as well to wish others well to wish enemies well and that's one of the hardest lessons of Scorpio season because of course the classic temptation here is to go crazy or seek revenge or harbor a resentment wound. And there's no judgment if you are doing that or you choose to do that. It's completely your choice and your spiritual experience and your journey and your path. We have anyway, the Eight of Swords next, another Swords card. Lots of Swords, again, the Justice. You remember the Justice card we had actually, this lovely mama holding a big sword Libra into Scorpio and also red, right? The red, but also anyway, swords, eight of swords. Um, please, I would say to some, keep your strategies under wraps or your goals, your wishes under wraps or share only with those people who can be trusted or put things, plans, savings even, put things only in spaces, places that can be trusted. It's anyway never good, I feel, to display all your hopes and dreams for all eyes and ears <laughs> to see and hear in Scorpio season. And again, like a spider, like a cat, crawl and slink away and around things a bit more during this season. Don't whistle in the night. I picked also the lover's card. There you are, isn't that lovely? The lover's card. Because in this season, many of us can face the choice, uh, which to some may be evil or wrong or harsh or dramatic, but to you, it is the right thing to do. And Mars, by the way, rules banishment, exile, separation from parents and separation from friends. And so it's a typical time to be necessarily a bit more apart in a Scorpio season, especially if a family member or friend has been abusing you and you need to run away. Lilith, by the way, the madam of running away, is in Cancer and trines Scorpio right now. So great escapes are divinely backed now. And of course, finally, the death card. We have very typical Scorpio card, Scorpio season sign. The classic ending of chapters, the slowly approaching light after the dark. But what are the new moon in particular then? Well, it does, I think, bring about themes, such themes as unrequited love, Venus and the sun 
and the moon are all mixed up here in a kind of pagan bittersweet dance there is a lot of benefic energy but there's also the detriment and there's the moon trying to pull and soothe itself and there's venus trying to soften and soothe things um and the sun is here coming out of its um fall in libra and into a little bit more dignity the sun is bringing some strong realizations or trying to and i myself am going through a breakup and after a literal decade of relationships i've put this sort of stake in the map of my life where i say okay that was that that was one version or chapter of me but now my hands are turning to a lost a long lost part of the map and as a cancer rising as well a lot of this new moon for me is about dipping into my authenticity and taking some bigger gamble and also to promise the gods that I've learned my lesson, re the types of partner I've had and all of that. And Mars, by the way, also rules hands and working with the hands. So it could be a good opportunity, especially once Mars goes retrograde to go back to something where we did use our hands or busy ourselves or occupy ourselves with something that we need to be doing. And I think for many of us, this new moon marks a time to give a big yes to exciting new beginnings. But the moon does fall in Scorpio. So this is likely rough, raw, it's the, you know, the beginnings are spiky. Maybe we're coming out of a bad romance. Things are uncomfortable. Some will even feel sick or nauseous during Scorpio season, like something buried inside, like wanting to show its head, maybe its ugly head. And I see also a redemption of passion for many, the, the unearthing of buried passions. Now, the beginning of Scorpio season is marked by this Sun Venus Kazemi, which is just when a planet is right in the center of the sun, astrologically speaking. And from this, I read opportunities for naughtiness and secret sensuality but also rituals of sensuality venus does rule rituals and we often get at this time selfless rituals and campaigns and things like sober october and no nut november and you know people wanted to grow mustaches and beards not just for fashion but for causes and a lot of these kinds of march and demonstration and sponsorship they are demonstrations of some passion that usually has something to do with death with disease with addiction and many of these people do these things because they have lost a loved one or they are struggling themselves uh, due to a particular disease or addiction or something and so scorpio season is always that kind of time where people really dig up that raw emotion and that pain and try to turn it into something that can maybe be vested back into other people or into recovery or into research or into something scorpio loves to take something broken or dead or deadly and uh, regenerate it somehow or make something tough out of the toxic and we can find also ourselves preserving our sexual energies during this time for those of us who are sexual just be aware of the creeps and wear the red the color red not to attract but to protect actually during this time it's very important as always scorpio season is chrysalis season at the end of the day and it's sewn it's the time it's halloween it's the time when the veils between the worlds are the thinnest and we find here secret or quiet reflections on our growth, growth of self, and also the growth of others, or the development, if you want to call it, the development of others. And we get curious about whether or not that ex has changed or that friend we haven't seen in a decade, what are they doing? And we can be tempted to kind of dip back into things, especially when Mars goes retrograde, it can get very sexy and steamy and revisiting that but as I said, this new moon can make us a bit kooky and chase dead horses. Um, 
Okay, often we also need in Scorpio season to know that something addictive or seductive is bad for us, but not simply this. We need to now, in this time, go through some sort of trial, many of us, to see what we're actually going to do about it. And Scorpio season is always that mirror in the dark, that candle to the face, and it's the demons or it's the music faced. It doesn't pull as many punches as Libra season did. It often, but it's, it's, Libra season delivers big karmic punches. Scorpio season may have some karmic punches left for us, but really it just has lots of punches. So it can be a very harsh season. And it often invites us, Scorpio season, to sleep with our fears. So we have to be careful to not get swallowed by them, but to overcome or at least understand them. And shadow season is shadow work we can also get those wild kind of insane desires. Venus is one of the desire planets and it's in detriment in Scorpio and it's like having a crush right on someone and, and you join the badminton club just because they play badminton but you just kind of take things a little too far and we do have to be real and rough and ready to face and fight for truths in Scorpio season. It's it's the good, it's the bad, it's the ugly, it's all these things rolled up in this cauldron of shady waters. Also, I often call Scorpio season the Jean Grey season, but this year I think it's a bit less about controlling and a little more about unleashing for some, unleashing authentic selves once and for all, breaking through old shells and skins like a snake shedding. And there are necessary pains to recover from, to recover from that surface up, that bubble up. And we will be given the choice, I think, to soar and to, uh, or to suffer, to soar or to suffer. Um, but it's really like a soaring out of suffering um, or to suffer or hope for hope. That's a choice we'll be given. And Mars rules hopeless situations, by the way. However, also the sun is vitality. It's that big, sparkly, shiny yes, right? And I'll always remember hearing one time that terminally ill people, uh, patients, they live longer when they spend more time in the sun or they're exposed more to sunlight when the solace is on them. We are really like plants and concrete in Scorpio season. It's resilience often. And also Scorpio represents resourcefulness. And not many astrologers discuss this, but it is one of the best seasons to save your money or to source and accumulate materials that you need. Especially if you're doing it in a quiet or secretive way, it's even more effective. But it has to have that truth, that core. It has to be something that you have that burning passion for, that desire for. It's a great time also for hard cutting savings to really just get rid of all those direct debits that you don't need to really just get to the bare bones. Beware of obsessing over it though, but it is a good time. Sextile, sextiles Virgo, Scorpius. It's always a sextiles Capricorn as well. So it's always a good time <laughs> now with Venus, especially in Scorpio, to save cut just not too deep and of course it's a fixed sign as well scorpio so there's a possibility for much waste and a squalor um debasement dirtiness and a plunging into suffering just to get to the other side people some people are like that some people like to kind of harm themselves or throw themselves into chaos and suffering so beware of that and there is, of course, the odd encounter stuff. Let me not say beware, because some people, they, they like it. So do that. It's Scorpio season, right? Do that. Um, but there is, of course, also the odd encounter type stuff. The stranger who asks you for something randomly. And in the culture where I'm from, we are taught like not to scorn or ignore a stranger, especially like an elderly or ugly or poor person in case they actually are the good people or 
and we set off some sort of karmic offense for ourselves. Anyway, Scorpio is the well. It is that dark room, the dark hole. It is the feminine demon facing season. And we can now get into our minds, stuck in our minds and into wars in our mind and in our heart and soul. And this is not necessarily to speak clinically, but things like paranoia can crop up in Scorpio season. And let's not forget that Scorpio does sextile Virgo and Capricorn and Venus now in detriment, remember, rules sextiles. So this is like needing to pay attention to detail because there may be some life and death scenario or life and death thing that you weren't paying attention to. And it's like also some like finding somebody annoying, right? And, and they keep giving you advice or trying to give you a tip about something or tell you something and you just make fun of them and you gossip about them even and ridicule that. And then the next day or the next week, you find yourself suffering because specifically because you did not heed that advice. So Scorpio season loves to kind of burn us. Mars rules burns and cuts and bleeding. And so Scorpio loves to, to, to play with our psyche in this way. It's feminine Mars. It loves to cut us from inside out and sneer at us, right? From the corner of the room. And it loves to have us feeling great about ourselves as well, because we are not in somebody else's situation. But this kind of unchecked judgmental schadenfreude type of energy, this is again, stuck in between Virgo and Capricorn. It uh, builds up inside of us and it makes us sick or overly cynical. And Mars is just speaking in booming volumes now. And Mars is in Gemini as well, a sign where it's peregrine or where it can make it difficult for us or make it delightful for us. It really could go either way, depending on where it is in your chart and what's going on for you in your life. And Mars rules things like lies. Well, Mars rules so many things, but these are the things that I think are going to be most significant in this Scorpio season and also once Mars turns retrograde, but Mars rules lies, Mars rules sex, hatred, abortion, anger, captivity, adultery, torture, masculinity, especially harsh or virile masculinity. And Mars also rules imprisonment, fevers, ulcers, skin eruptions, inflammations, perjury, deception, and people who are very experienced at doing wrong. There's a lot more, but I think we'll save that when we dive deeper into Mars in my upcoming Mars and Gemini video. Ultimately though, I think this season, while being a malefic season, because we do have malefic seasons and benefic seasons as part of life and spiritual experience, but this season can bring us some powers and some nice riches too, if we are careful and kind, and again, stick to that truthful core passion. And also if we stay out of people's way and we mind our business, and if we accept that there are seasons again of hurt and that our spirits are meant to experience this in order to navigate our anger, to understand our anger, our fear, our inner fire that does not burn, but which broils in this season. So that's what I've got for you, my loves, my hinsters. Leave me a comment, let me know where you are having these Scorpio season activations, where you have Scorpio in your birth chart, and I'll see you in the next one. Slan, bye-bye.